folks, Jeff Brown here. I'm back. Um, this is the track by track commentary for the Forfeit King Part 2. If you missed Forfeit King Part 1, click here. Or here. I don't know what it's going to be. Um, to listen to that commentary first before we continue on with the uh, Part 2 here. But if you already listened to it, then let's continue on. This is the Forfeit King Part 2, released on December 10th, 2021. And uh, here we go. In 3, 2, 1, go. So excited. All right. And um, so, a little backstory about uh, conceptually or uh, the collection of these songs, as far as the whole project is concerned. You know, the Forfeit King um, it's a continuation of uh, my last two albums, The Grim and The Darkest of Summers, um, more in the essence of uh, more shorter, concise. Um, songs as opposed to my album from 2018 acquiescence which was 16 tracks any song would range from four to five minutes long too long for this day and age so I wanted to create more of a concise more focused um, genre for each particular album so the darkest of summers was my uh, you know industrial electronica type of more moody dark and depressing type of thing um, juxtaposed with the grim which I released about six seven months later which is more of the polar opposite more heavy death metal type of thing um, and then it was followed up by the forfeit king here of this year which um, I decided to cut into two parts because uh, the first part was more punky alternative rock and the second part here is um, more of a straightforward, groovy type of almost classic rock Led Zeppelin type of feel. So, um, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, this song is already halfway over, dude. This is Lady Peace, the first song on the um, on the album here, which uh, is the first song to feature Madden and Jordan from Space Junk is Forever. Uh, I think it was the beginning of the pandemic. Um, uh, I. Um, emailed Jordan some tracks and asked him if he would play his awesome Hammond organ on uh, on some of these tunes I was working on because they had more of a uh, classic rock um, organic feel, no pun intended. Uh, I actually had uh, my fake organs all over the album and I wanted him to replace it with his real Hammond organ. Um, so he replied back, um, he'd love to do it. and I'd, yeah, but he said he suggested asking Madden to play drums on it, which I never it never even occurred to me. I sent him the tracks. I sent her the tracks. Within the next couple of weeks, I got back the most amazing sounding performances ever. Um, the sound that Jordan sent me was amazing because he was miking up a real Leslie cabinet with his Hammond organ, pan him left to right, creates this uh, amazing uh, real sound that. He, can't really replicate with uh, software these days. Um, furthermore, with Madden, she sent me back tracks that were to the T my parts that I programmed with my fingers in Logic. Uh, she even went as far as transcribing what my parts were and replicating to a T, which was truly amazing. I never expected her to do that, which is awesome because I literally just plopped in her files into my session and they lined up completely. This was the first song that actually came out um, that inspired the whole Forfeit King t name and the whole concept. Um, I think I was listening to a lot of Crash Kings at the time, which if you're not familiar, they're a band from Boston, I believe. Three piece, guy plays piano, so it's piano, bass, and drums. Um, and that whole groovy, slow groove vibe type of lo-fi type of sound really intrigued me and really fell in love with it so I started messing around with this um, the main riff of that, the song and um, I can't remember the working title that song was called actually you know what it was called Lady Peace because the chorus of the song sounds like Our Lady Peace yeah sometimes that's how song titles just come, come, come along your working title ends up to be the same exact final title of the song anyway so yeah, we're continuing on with Thought It Through, and as I previously mentioned in part one, um, 
this was one of the, the other songs that I uh, wrote with Stephen Payon back in 2006 in, uh, in my bedroom studio in Manhattan. Uh, we had a, a loft bed, which underneath it turned into a little makeshift studio with a desk and keyboard and my little Fostex digital recorder and the mics and everything. So Stephen would come over every Friday night. We'd go out to dinner and come over and get a belly full of food and beer. Just work on tunes, and uh, you know, four or five months later, we had a whole album together. Um, so those songs sat on the shelf for a decade plus, and so I was putting the Four Foot King together. Um, I needed another song that had that slow, groovy type of, um, you know, grungy '90s type of feel. And I remember thought it through. It was actually one of the first songs we worked on. Um, so. Pulled it off the shelf, dusted it off, and threw it into the uh, the session here. All right, so on to Road to Galilee. Um, I must mention that this was um, this, I've had the song title sitting around since I would say high school. It's uh, September 23rd, 1995. We're gonna we're gonna watch this Pete uh, jamming, and uh, I'm gonna be playing the bass, and I don't know what bass to play in. But yeah. Must have been watching a um, documentary about Jesus or religion or something like that, and that was that. Like I said, song titles, lyrics will come to me when I'm watching TV or hearing a passing conversation. This is no different. They must have said, "Road to Galilee." Jesus walked the road to Galilee with his disciples. Lyrics gave me the hardest time. Uh, I would have to come back. You know, I'd spend an hour on it hit a roadblock and come back. Um, not so much because I couldn't come up with something I want. I needed to, to make it right because of the um, the text or the uh, themes, which more or less is about Jesus and his teachings. So we go from, you know, the, um, the first verse is basically a conversation between Satan and Jesus. Pre-choruses are Jesus speaking himself, and then the choruses are um, uh, uh, his his um, his fans, his disciples, the world, if you will. Um, so it took a while to you know construct a nice narrative between my experiences and memories of, of what I learned in you know church school, and you know I made my first com communion and all that, but I uh, actually had to go back and refer to the Bible get to the bridge so I had uh, Rex Anderson do the voiceover on this he's a voiceover artist from Baltimore done a bunch of commercials and stuff like that and it's a perfect place for someone else other than me to uh, you know lend their hand and um, throw their talent in the mix blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed hey guys thanks for watching the video be sure to subscribe here Listen to the full album here, and watch some other videos here. Take care. Bye. It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men.